Y254 Imagine A very good evening to you. How are you doing this day? I hope you've been having a wonderful, wonderful day. Today is the 28th of March and can you believe the month is coming to an end? It's still so hard to believe but we are here and we thank God. My name is Cheryl Blessing and I am your host tonight on the Power Talk Show. And based on this season, because Easter is just right around the corner, March has been a long, long month. What's going on? We want to have a conversation centered around the season of Easter. Last week, we had a conversation about self-forgiveness. How can we heal and move on from our past identities? And this week, we want to focus on forgiveness what around us. How can we build trust, particularly after it has been broken by someone, but you forgive them? You know, it's so hard for us as human beings to let go and release people who've broken our trust. And this evening on the Power Talk show, I want us to understand how we can rebuild trust, particularly after we have forgiven someone who broke it. And joining me live on set are two guests who are very well versed in this conversation. And uh, immediately to my far left, we have Alan Lawrence, who is not even a guest here. <laughs> Karibu sana. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And Alan is a relationship coach as well as a, an author. And you've released a new book, which we will get into as we progress with the conversation. Yeah. And right next to Alan, we have the beautiful Patience Shalom, who is now a guest here for the first time, but we hope Atakwa part of the family. Patience, you're a journalist as well as a poet. Yeah. That's very impressive. I've met very few poets in my lifetime. You're going to meet many after this. Amen. It's the beginning <laughs> of many. Yeah. yeah. You better introduce me to a few because I love the art of poetry. Mm -hmm. And it's such a wonderful... It's, I love the cast. We are colorful. We are mm -hmm. excited. Quarter one, year 2024, Imeisha. Imeisha, I feel like... You know, Mwaka in Akimbi already. Yeah. 2024, my 2024 has been amazing. Yeah. I was actually checking my Instagram highlights every year I reach 2024. Yeah. Then everything I do in a post table. Mm. So just when I was checking, it was full. Then I'm asking myself, what have I been doing? And it's just much. It's just much. <laughs> so I've done a lot. I'd say 2024 is going so well with me. That's amazing. Complain. And we love to hear that because, yeah. you know, at least Mwaka Kendalia Vizuri, our goals and Yetulibeka, if we are really checking them as we progress, yeah. that's what matters. Mm -hmm. So I want us to have this conversation, particularly on building trust after someone broke it, but to Memsameha, you've not held this person, you've released them, and you've forgiven them. But is it possible for you to build trust after it has been broken by someone? So I want you to go on our social media platforms, at Y254, go on Twitter, which is now X. I find it so hard to, <laughs> to get away from Twitter. You can go on X, Facebook, and Instagram. We have made a post, and I want you to let me know what is your opinion on this conversation? We will sample that as we progress. But I think to kickstart, because the season of Easter, it's mm -hmm. all about forgiveness. Jesus has died. It, he's about to die, rather. Mm -hmm. You know, tomorrow, yeah. and then we start the season of Easter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people will have, so many cultures and religions as well, because Sai Ramadan is also in uh, progress, and that's also about forgiveness and letting go of maybe past sins mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. I want us to, to get it. What's, what is forgiveness? Alan, when we talk about forgiveness, what does that mean to you? Uh, forgiveness for me, 
it is a point of you choosing your own peace over anything that will happen around you. Many people around you can be able to heartbreak you. Many people around you can be able to offend you. But the power for the power to make the offense get into you is solely on you. So you have the sole decision to be able to make to choose the peace around you. So it's kind of the environment that you want yourself to live in because each and every moment we are offended. But yeah. it is upon you now. How do you turn the offense to become something positive unto you? Yeah. yeah. I like that because now it becomes, it's a choice yeah. that you make. Yeah. And that's, I think, that, that informs our conversation because yeah. it's either you choose to forgive or you choose to hold on to the yeah. grudge yeah. and everything sure, sure. that has been done against you. And patience, along the same lines, do you think, because kuna crimes enye mtu anafanyanga uko like uyu, ata atuwezi msamehea. But do you think everyone deserves forgiveness? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> everyone, yeah, everyone deserves forgiveness because, okay, if you look in the holy book, it says you should forgive others so that God will forgive you. Yeah. So, but it tends to be so hard at times when someone has done a very big mistake to you and you can't just forgive. But I believe the first step, first step is acceptance. So if you just accept, you know what, I'm in Nicosia. So just to add or just to echo what he has said it's all about you at the end of the day it's about me so i'll yeah. just keep thinking and having a lot of carrying a lot of should i say anger in me yeah. and and i live too freely so no he's not even thinking about you or anything yeah. so but me penyeniko and i feel ah i'm guilty i'm so angry just because of him so i believe it's just acceptance and then when you accept, you have to, you know what, let me just let go because it's me. I'm getting angry. I'm not focusing on myself. And yeah. yeah. And I like that you've brought that out because I know so many people who were me shikilia mtu kwa roho yao. Wako like so and so kosead me in 2018. Mm -hmm. But this person has moved on. Their life is continuing. But mm -hmm. you're still holding on to what someone did a few years back. So last week we were having a conversation about self-forgiveness, the importance of you forgiving yourself because we all grow, we all make mistakes, and it's important to let go of that identity. Yes. So let's, let's start from there because yes. self-forgiveness already, ningumu sana. Mm. But how can we get to a point of self-forgiveness? Do we need awareness? Do we need information? How can we get there? Alan, what do you think can lead us to self-forgiveness? Number one thing is, uh, you know, you can never forgive unless you have proper information about yourself, unless you are self-aware. So it is very important you appreciate the person in the mirror. We live a life whereby people are so much bitter with themselves. That is why you find people hurting other people. That's why we call them sadists. So you find this person because they are not comfortable in their own skin. The only time they feel comfortable is them imposing pain unto you. So if this person is self-aware of what they are, what they are, they are dealing with, because you can never arrest what you, nev what you caress. So you got to be realistic with the person in the mirror. So get proper information, get in touch with yourself, uh, with yourself so much. That is why it is very important you do a lot of self-introspection. Yeah. Have time with yourself. Have time to critique yourself positively. Even write down, w s have a paper and uh, have a pen and a paper. Write down your weaknesses. Write down your strength, so that you can be able to work on it and find accountable people around you to walk the journey with you. It's not an easy thing, but you got to be very, very, very much intentional. Because not unless you are very intentional about it, you will end up uh, bleeding on people, and yet these people did not hurt you. It is all about you as an individual. Yeah. yeah. And I like the way you've driven that point home. Yeah. Because so many times we do not sit down with ourselves. Yeah. We want to say, Kila mta menikosea. But hautake kukubali that you have played a role in whatever situation. And that's the thing that most people deal with. I'm willing to say, patience wronged me. But then I'm not willing to. Yeah mention the part I played in yeah, that yes, situation. Yes. People are permitted to heart, to heartbreak you and to do anything. Yeah. But the power to take it as a heart or to take it as a lesson is solely on you. So yeah. it is about me, it's not about the other person. Mm. Yeah. Which is so important because yeah. if you can forgive yourself, yeah. then it makes it that much easier yeah. to forgive someone else. Yeah. And now I wonder, because patience you brought in uh, an important point on acceptance being the first step. You have to have acceptance within 
useme hii situation imesha happen do you think that takes maturity because sometimes when we really reflect on our life back in maybe primary school uko like umtali ni bebe amandazi na hakunigawia and you hold on to this person for years and years just because of one small detail do you think it takes maturity for you to get to a point where you sit down and you can really reflect on the situation and say i made the mistake here or this person yes made the mistake but i'm willing to forgive and move on yeah yeah it takes a lot of maturity you have to just as he said sit down and introspect yourself and for example maybe the situation you are beefing over is not a big thing so maybe you can call the other party and you talk and you talk it out and you know unafika point ah this is what it's right it's just that we were seeing things from different perspectives you see so it takes a lot of maturity to sit down and and, and listen to the other person and make them know ah uh, wacha tu ni kusamehe ama i just let this thing go and maybe people who are much grown than us the the old ones i don't call yeah. them old <laughs> then they don't maybe if they are beefing with the younger generation they'll see we are the mistake they wouldn't want to understand our side of the story so i believe as much as there's maturity you just have to sit down and talk it out doesn't matter the age or this and this and this my point and your point can be the same thing if we sit down and talk i like that because you know that's one thing people never do mm. or they do it but not as often sitting down and having a conversation after the fact that the mistake has happened because as you've said so many times it's just a misunderstanding yeah. maybe i came from a point of frustration and anger and you picked it up from a point of this person wants to fight and that is where conflicts arise from because mm -hmm. once you can't sit down and have a conversation then you can't have clarity on the matter and the fact that you've even brought in the older and the younger generation twende kwanza hapo with specific <laughs> interest in kwanza kwa wazazi cuz you know <laughs> you see the thing where you're growing up I, I used to joke with a friend of mine about senior mzazi ana correct and then you hold on to that you're like they don't like me they don't want me to live my life but it's because you do not understand their perspective and they, or they're trying to help you and you're just too young to realize yeah. that do you think we have to sit down with our parents because you know so many people have been hurt from the family childhood, home yeah. from the childhood and throughout their lives yeah. first of all alan do you think it's possible for you to sit down and have a conversation with your parent and tell them Nikki grew up I felt like this this and this situations really made me feel bad and it's traumatized me. Okay the challenge most of us are having to have a discussion with parents if we want to advise our parents mm -hmm. you can never advise a parent you can only suggest to a parent. And the, another challenge we can highlight is we are not having a conversation to talk to our parents we are talking at our parents. So whereby a parent uh, a parent might have uh, hurt me but the only way nakuja kwa social media the only way nakuja nakuja kum discuss with the other people or another kurushiana manen whereby now I'm not ad, I'm, I'm not suggesting to a parent for example how do I suggest to a parent when the situation has cooled down talk to them and be like mom i was thinking supposing this situation to get handled this way a piece to their ego but the challenge with us especially as the gen z's or whatever we want to be like manze ungeni treat hivi 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 so a parent will be rebellious you understand so and also uh, 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 our to our parents our parents also need not to police us yeah they need to advise us now for us we need to suggest to them and them they need to advise us and the best way for them to advise us is not by them sitting us down to talk unto us their actions remember we are watching Uh, the way they relate with each other the way they relate with everybody out there we are watching so through that we can be able to pick a few character traits from them and we'll be able to inculcate into ourselves so the best way we can have a conversation with our parents is for us to suggest unto them and be open minded so that we understand their perspective and also they understand our perspective and also parents they need to give children a chance to be children remember a child you nurture today will uh, a, a child you nurture today will be able to flourish you tomorrow so the quality of of of, of mentorship the quality of parenting you are giving it now remember you are giving it the pros the posterity that it deserves 
So yeah. we have to be very careful. I, like, I hope the parents at home, and even the kids are listening, yeah. because you have to suggest to your parents, yeah. and then they advise yeah. you, yeah. not police you. Because yeah. I think that's where we, we mix it up. Because yeah. sometimes you come from a point of frustration and anger, and you go at your parents, and because of the tone and even the approach, yeah they cannot be receptive yeah, to you. They yeah. feel like, umemea sasa usa yuko na kiburi. Because in African parents will tell you, sasa ni mtu mkubu hapa. Tanguende Nairobi. Tanguende Nairobi. And it's just because you've gotten to a point of awareness where you can address certain things. Yeah. And realistically, their parents were receptive. Yeah, sure. Who you will sit down with them, have a conversation, and they actually listen to you. Maybe not at that moment. Yeah. You know, parents saying in African parents, mm. they, they can never admit they're wrong. They can't tell you uko right. <laughs> in future, and don't ask you, by the way, mm. can you listen to it make sense? Yeah. They just do it. They just do it. Mm. They don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because of also the pride. Yeah. But now if also the child has a pride, because when you want to approach your parents, you've probably gotten to a point of maturity and understanding that you can address matters but sasa your approach, the way you've said, the approach is what matters. matters yeah. What if a parent is not receptive? Because there are parents who, you, the way you've said, there are personalities of people who are sadists, some people, some people are narcissistic, some people are just, you know, they're struggling with their own mental yeah, yeah, issues. Yeah. How do you get to forgive a parent who's dealing with some sort of maybe personality trait? Patience, because you know these days, I had someone ask, can I take my parent to therapy? Because <laughs> maybe then they'd be receptive to it. How do you approach a situation where you're trying to convey you hurt me and this and this situation, so the way you speak to me really de demoralizes me. How can you communicate that to someone who is not receptive? Because we've said we have to talk. Maybe it's just misunderstanding. If they're not receptive to that conversation, how do you deal with that then? I read somewhere, someone was, was it a post or a meme? Um, you should take your parents slowly. This is this is or this is the first time their parents. They have not done this before. Yeah, there is no manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Akuna manual. The same way we don't have manual of living, we just live. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way there's no manual of parenthood. They just have to try this and try this and try that. So if you um when you get to know that, you know Indio Mara Kwanza wanafanya hivi. But then as you have mentioned, many of them might not listen. So as for me, I'm privileged, um, my mom do listens. Maybe mm -hmm. at times when I'm home and uh, something is not happening, I tend to, to say, uh, I'll talk about it later or I just brush things off. But then she's like, you know, ka pochini niambie ni nini mbaya. But you know, mimi personally, I don't talk. Anything it can happen here, I'll go. Nimalize mambo yangu, then I'll come back when I'm good. But then no, she will want to talk. Then uh, then when the moment she started letting herself out and making me comfortable. The moment I started talking, I realized, you know what, she listens. So I believe sometimes many youths wanna film. That's the yeah. picture I portray. But when you sit down and you just crack that God, nini yeah. mask. Maybe when you just sit down and just talk, maybe other families are not like ours, maybe wana yeah. nini nini. But I'd say when you sit down and just express yourself, don't take her or him as a parent. I believe my mom tells me like I'm your friend. Just mm. talk to me like that or talk to me like your sister. So yeah. I shall make kila tuika kwa comfortable. I'm talking to her like a mom, like a friend, like everything and it can be that. So I believe yeah. if a parent makes his or her children comfortable, they're going to talk. Vitu mingi sana we are told to kiwa campus. Maybe when we're just hanging out and your friends are opening up, then you're like, is it what is going to happen? Do you tell your parents? <laughs> no, I don't. Then you see, we, we get a lot of depression. People just kill themselves. But they had an opportunity to talk, but they did not talk because their parents were like, kulikwana mask. They have yeah. not. So I believe parents should remove the mask, yukali nini, and just talk to your child. Yeah. Is your child, because when do not yeah. yeah, I like that because the way you said, you should take your parent as a friend. One thing I've also come to realize, our parents are just humans like yeah, us. Yeah. You know, they experience life the same way we do, and they're just learning it, by the way. They're taking it day by day. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, maybe even the, the mask and the facade is because 
that is the only way they know how to. Because most times we take what our parents taught us and we carry that forward. Because you can get the previous generations, what are you Akuna kuongea kwa iboma, mnaongea mkisema nini na weni mtoto. And sometimes they even take you as a child, even if you're grown, you're a full adult. <laughs> you, you might be a CEO, but ukirudi nyumbani, wewe ni mtoto. Sindio? And you can't really open up and express. And as you've said, there are different family dynamics because their families were, they're not even given that platform. Yeah. They're not, there's no open forum hapa, ni dictatorship. Mm -hmm. So when I look at a situation like that, let's say you've tried, maybe you, you've gotten to a place where you've tried and had a conversation. But this parent, bado hakusikizi, maybe it's your dad, your mom, doesn't listen, is not receptive. And they've broken your trust because there are people who say, once I move out, I'm never coming back. Mm -hmm. Or they can't even trust their parents to do small, small things. So how can we, Alan, if, how can you individually, usemetu ni meachilia, and I just want to trust that ni parent wangu, they have my best interest at heart. How do we get to that point? Uh, the way I'll echo her words, you know, it's you now to be friendly to your parents and also your parents to be friendly unto you, but endeavor to make your parents your friends and also put a demarcation. There is a time they're supposed to be a parent and there is a time they're supposed to be a friend. And also yeah. there is a plea to parents out here. As much as you are investing for the family, you also need to invest into the family. Yeah. Whereby have this conversation. It's, only, uh, it's not only about investment, it's not only about we are going this, we are going. Make everybody feel on board whereby L listen to their views, you understand? And through that also make a decision whereby everyone will feel included, everyone will feel uh, they are part of the family. So through that you can be able to be even easier for you to uh, ventilate out your issues, be able to give suggestions, and through that you grow as a family. So whenever there is something of sort, uh, the best thing is for you to, to ensure that you don't expose, uh, let's say, the, the weaknesses of your parents out there. Ensure that the situation is very calm and pick a conversation from there. And that is why I still repeat, suggest unto your parents and also understand them where they're coming from. Maybe that is, the best that is the best parenthood they can offer. So through that also, learn to alter your expectations on, on your parents. Ensure that whatever you, you get from your parents, ensure that you multiply it and become the, the positive vibes that is. Ensure you multiply it and transfer it to the next generation. So it's all about your perception. It's all about what do you want to see out of your parents. If you want to see negativity, I always say life is always fair. If you want to see negativity in them, if you want to see positivity, you'll always see. And remember, you'll always attract what you want. So be a good child to them, and also they will be a good parent unto you. Mm. Change your mentality. And that's really nice, because yeah. you know so many people carry on the mentality of the parents, and they wonder, mbona vitu zibadiliki? And it's about you transforming. And it pulls us back to the beginning. Yeah. You need to be able to sit down with yourself. Yeah. You need to be able to have a conversation with yourself yeah. where you actually address and admit. Mini toxic, by the way. Because <laughs> you know, people never want to admit they're toxic. Yeah. They never want to admit we're the problem. Yeah. And I can also admit there's a point where I could never sit down and say I'm the one who may have cost something, yeah. we always want to see the wrong in people. Yeah. And as Alan has also said, it's important for you to have the right perception. Because if you look at, if I look at patients and I see an enemy, regardless of whatever patients will do, she's going to be an enemy. Yeah, sure. And that takes us back to the stereotypes. So the minute you break away from the perceptions that we have, then it's easy for us to see people for who they really yeah, are. Because yeah. most times we realize that our parents are just as scared as we are. Our parents are just trying to navigate yeah. this. Even the older generations, let's just widen it to the older generations. Yes. Times are changing. Do you know how crazy it is for you to have grown in an era where akukwa na simu, and then right now the digital space is booming and yeah. AI is everywhere. Yeah. I can imagine how shocking it is for them to even adjust to this new setup. And you know, as there's a common saying of you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Because... Isha Zoya. Isha Zoya. Yeah. So it takes acceptance of the situation. It takes us to reflect. Because if we are malleable, then it's possible for us to even change yeah. the situation. Sure. So um, I want us to take a very short break. But before that, I want to remind you to go on our social media platforms. It is at Y254TV on X. 
Instagram and Facebook. We have made a comment. I want to find out from you. Is it possible for you to build trust with someone who's broken it? But to them, some here, maybe it's your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your boss, whoever, they broke your trust and you forgave them. But is it possible to rebuild that trust? And then when we come back, I want us to talk about our personal relationships. Because who can open your forgiveness? <laughs> Alan will give us some tips on how to get over forgiveness, particularly in our personal relationships, as well as in our interpersonal relationships. Let's take a very short break, but stick to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing, and this is the Power Talk Show. <laughs> 